Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven and get another drink, man. <laughs> Nothing worse than a stray Christian. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, drink. Be joyful. Glory. God is good. In his presence is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when people are weak, what's the matter? They've been drained. Amen? They've been drained. When we're weak, we're drained. When we're filled, we're strong. Psalm 43. Oh, glory. Is everybody there? Psalm 43, verse 1. Vindicate me, O oh God. Anybody here need vindication? <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, and plead my cause against a what? Ungodly nations. Are the nations ungodly? I don't know of any godly nations. There's only one godly kingdom, that's Jesus. But every nation these days is ungodly. Now God is beginning to remove ungodly leaders and put godly leaders in there to make nations more godly but they haven't reached the plateau of true godliness. And that can only occur when Jesus comes, when he wipes out all the other nations that are ungodly. Amen? He says, oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of what? The oppression of the enemy. So who oppresses you? Your neighbor, your spouse, your boss? No, the enemy, the unseen. The unseen oppresses us. So we've got to stop looking physically and start looking more spiritually. Because if you don't, you'll always be oppressed. You'll be miserable. And the word says, make no place for the devil or grieve the Holy Spirit. You'll be in a constant place of grieving the Holy Spirit and making place for the devil. Amen. And you'll be oppressed all the time. Verse 3. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me and bring me to your holy hill. So what's going to bring us to the holy hill? Light and truth. And to your what? Tabernacle. Are we in the tabernacle right now? Yes. Then I will go to the altar of God and to my exceeding jo to God my exceeding joy. Now I look at this. To God who is my exceeding joy. There is no greater joy than your relationship with God. And on the harp I will praise you, O oh my God, my God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? My emotions that are oppressing. And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him. In other words, he's saying, look, at, I don't care how I feel. I'm going to praise him anyways. Because I know when I finally get in the presence of God, it's going to change. The help of my continence and my God. So what's going to change his continence is God's presence. But there's something that he was crying out. He realized he was actually asking for vindication or he was actually asking escape from darkness. The request was send your light and your truth and I'll come out of this. Does everybody get this? See, there's so much darkness right now. Well, how does light shine when there's more darkness? Oh, snap. So the request is that 
light and truth be granted to him so that he could find the way to God's presence and abiding place. What he was literally asking for was an escape from darkness. And that's what the world is asking for. The escape from darkness. See, we were struggling with all kinds of things when we were out in the world. So many times we lose sight that we're supposed to be out from the world. <laughs> we're no longer in the world. But while we were out in the world, we were always looking for an ex escape from darkness. We tried all kinds of things. Man could br not bring you out. <laughs> A program cannot bring you out. Amen. Nobody can bring you out except for the one who brings light and truth. He's the only one that can bring you out. Then what does he do? He brings you into his presence. Psalm 61. Escape from darkness. So is dark, darkness a place of bondage? Yes. Is it a prison? Yes. Yeah. Is there torment? Yes. yes. In verse 1, Psalm 61, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my what? My prayer. From the end of the earth, I will what? Cry to you. When my heart is what? Overwhelmed. Anybody ever been overwhelmed? What did you run to? The phone or the throne? When you were overwhelmed, did you run to the word? To God's presence? Or did you run away from it? When my heart is overwhelmed, when my soul is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is what? Higher than I, praise God. What is he trying to say? I'm not God. You are. Verse 3. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. For you, all God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong, how many of y'all know your kings? If you don't know that, you ought to know it. You are called to be a priest and a king. In fact, what we did during worship was fulfill our priesthood. Amen? Amen? That's what the Holy Spirit said to me. I wanted to fulfill their priesthood. So we ministered to the Lord today. Amen. You will prolong our life. Our years as many generations. We shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve us. We will sing praise to your name forever that we may daily perform our vows or fulfill the commands he's asked us to do, which is called his will. You know, during worship, Actually, it didn't come until afterwards when we were just right after worship and we were praying in the Spirit. And I saw the hand of God. And the hand of God was glowing. And it was white and beautiful. It was radiating. And it was reaching into people's hearts. I'm telling you, the hand of God was reaching into every single heart here today. And I saw hands coming up and going... No, rejecting the hand of God. I'm telling you, I saw that today. As the hand of God was going into the heart to do a heart change, people were taking their hand and going, no, no. God moved his hand back out. It grieved my spirit. See, there's things that just 
people want to stand on no matter what and not allow God to work with them. Oh, it grieved my spirit. And I know it grieved his. Because he's always looking for a heart change. Always. Why? Because he wants our heart. He wants an exchange of heart. So when our heart changes, we see what he sees. We speak what he speaks. Is everybody okay? When we are overwhelmed, we run to his tabernacle of presence where our faith and our trust can be reconnected. Escaping the atmosphere of darkness. People that are taken captive by darkness are in an atmosphere of darkness. Does everybody get it? Psalm 24. How many know pride will slap the hand of God away? Even fear will. Anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, all of these things will slap the hand of God away. Verse 1. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Again, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol or sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord. How many of y'all want to be blessed? And righteousness from the God of salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Clean hands. Clean hands is associated with not touching him with something unclean. That means through thoughts. Amen? Through thoughts. Again, not a touching and maintaining an area of unforgiveness or bitterness or offense. A pure heart is a pure tongue. Everybody get this. Everyone say, a pure heart pure. is a pure tongue. It's not a serpent tongue. So my maintaining a righteous atmosphere, not a self-righteous atmosphere, can only come by maintaining a place of position in the tabernacle of his presence. But he said you must have clean hands and a pure heart. So those are things that prevent an individual from truly connecting. You can act it. You can attempt it. But until that heart is changed, until that tongue is changed, until the hands are clean and the heart is pure, you will not be allowed in that place. Is everybody okay? John chapter 1. And that is escaping darkness. John chapter 1. Starting at verse 1. It's always escaping darkness reminds me of this movie escaping Alcatraz or something, you know? <laughs> These guys were imprisoned. Everybody's trying to plan to like escape. People have their own plans of escape. <laughs> but there's only one way out. That's why he's called I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> Amen. In verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
and light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. When the atmosphere of darkness is allowed to overtake light by individuals' choices to react with words of darkness, they lose sight and comprehension of truth, and they fall back into survival and reject surrender. Does everybody understand it? That's allowing darkness to recapture you again. In Luke 11. Now, we're actually talking about people that were in the light and now have fallen prey to darkness. But look at the world that is caught up in darkness. They're waiting for a light to come. In Luke 11, verse 33. Is everybody there? Oh, snap. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket. But on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Now, I want to explain something. The eye is the imagination. It's called an image. Why? Because you see. That's why it's important that we repent for imageries, images, ungodly images. That's why we want them to be washed by the blood of Christ. Amen? The lamp of the body is the eye or your imagination. It is the window of sight in the spirit. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body will also be full of what? Light. But when your eye is what? Bad. Then your body is also full of darkness. Therefore take heed that the light which is in you is what? Not darkness. Why? Because can light can turn back to darkness. The light can be put out. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, then the whole body will be full of light. As when the bright shining of the lamp gives you light. Wow. So the eye is our imagination, our image. How we see things or perceive things. There is what we call imaginary sin or presumptuous sin. It's about imagination. It's about what, how people perceive things. It is allowing darkness to reign in our body and our atmosphere. Fear. Now, when people are deceived, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, right? So look at the world and how they are deceived. They are walking in an atmosphere of darkness. Amen? And you can tell what comes out of their mouth. If you could erase a human being and just see what the tongue comes out of, you'd see a serpent tongue. Perverse, accusive, all kinds of words. I mean, I, I, I was, there was a woman that just got elected. She was a senator, a congresswoman. And she was in a location. She just got elected, and she was with her children. And she began, she started after Donald Trump, our president, and started, every other word was an F letter. And her little children were there and everything. See, that was nothing but a serpent. Amen. That was a house of evil serpents and this is what we're seeing all over <clears throat> you'll know by what they speak all over anywhere on the news you'll see all of these individuals that have are been taken captive by darkness they perverse mouth hallelujah let's go a little further psalm 19 And then, you know, the wild thing is, is on the news, when they brought this up, some of the people were saying, well, it wasn't the language that bothered me. Well, what the heck was it? <laughs> it 
It was their disrespect. Well, their disrespect was in their language. Dummies. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 19. I was amazed when I saw that. I mean, I was amazed. And here they are televising this. And she's just freaking out. Every other word was an F word. And I don't mean favor. <laughs> or friendly. It was freaky. That's all you saw was a human, uh, a body with a serpent tongue going, Whoa. Why do you think the devil gets people to pierce their tongues? To become serpent tongue. People with pierced tongues don't speak very good things. Hallelujah. Psalm 19, verse 12. Some people have pierced tongues and don't even have it pierced. It's pierced by the enemy. Verse 12, who can understand his stupidity or his errors or deceptions? Cleanse me from what? Secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins that's associated with imagination, how you perceive things. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? Blameless. Well, if you allow that to have dominion over you, then you are not blameless. You are walking in an atmosphere of darkness. And I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Then he says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He was requesting escape from darkness, from evil imagination and presumptuous sin. Their evil presumptions, bitterness, unforgiveness is backed by and promoted by evil imaginations and false presumptions. Meditation is associated with thoughts of imagination. Amen? The world is plagued with presumptuous sin, evil imaginations, and an atmosphere of darkness. It uses people to bring up more darkness from hell by their words. God is awakening many to escape this darkness, but many are also going back. In 1 Corinthians 10. Where there's a great awakening, there's a great sleep. People, the enemy's always trying to bring people back asleep. 1 Corinthians 10. Oh, happy days. In verse 6. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6. That's why the word says, avoid individuals in this area. Why? Because bad company corrupts what? Good habits. See, there are people that are involved in bad company. How many of all demons are bad company? Because if you're still seen physically and not seeing spiritually or what's influencing you, then they're going to stay. They'll keep associating. They'll keep influencing. They'll begin to build their house and, and campus around darkness and an atmosphere so we can't see really what's going on. Remember, Jesus came to bring sight. The enemy came to bring blindness. In verse 6, now these things became our what? Examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things or they, uh, uh, as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Now let us tempt, let us, nor let us tempt Christ as some of them 
also tempted, and were destroyed by what? Serpents. Nor complain, as some of them also complain, and were destroyed by the destroyer. I believe Facebook is an opportunity for people to complain. That's why it's called Fleshbook. They, it's not, I mean, the news has turned not into news anymore. It's opinion. Amen. You know, there's really no news. It's all opinions. Verse 11. Now, all these things happened to them as in examples, and they were written for our admonishment, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is in common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to what? To bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry, which means yourself. I speak as to wise men, judge for yourselves. What I say, oh, hallelujah. Stepping away from this or escape, what are we stepping away from? Pride, arrogance, selfishness, self-righteousness. Again, sinful imagination, ungodly imaginations. All of these things that prevent us from truly entering in or being cut loose from. We must change our atmosphere. That's the responsibility of me and you. Everyone must work out their salvation. You can't work out somebody else's. You've got to work out yours. So we are a self-contained entity, and it's accountable and responsible for everything that we allow in and what we allow out. In Hebrews 2. That's why we are called the temple of God or a cup of demons. Hebrews 2. Is everybody okay? Hebrews 2, verse 1. You know, we have a teaching that says, don't go there. Because the enemy will try and suck you into his garbage. If you get sucked into his ring, you will lose the battle every time. Unless God sends you in there. Now, if you believe that God sent you in there and you lose, then God didn't. <laughs> That's that presumptuous false imagination stuff. Hallelujah. Verse 1, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we what? Drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast in every transgression and disobedience, receive a just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who feared him? God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. For he has not put the world to come or which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him? Or son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. Who's he speaking about? Us. <laughs> and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in the subjection under his feet. Powerful. For in that he put all subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But we, now we do not yet see all things put under him. In other words, so many, you know, as a man thinks, so he what? Is. So one of the things the enemy is always trying to do is mess with you in this area, especially with imagination. Anybody ever told you something that you believed? Found out it wasn't true? How many times has the devil told you something and you fought for what you believe, yet it was not true? I've been accused of all kinds of stuff. 
I mean, I'm, it's amazing in so many things that I've been accused of. I, it just blows me away. But just because their accusation towards me, they, wherever they got it from, I don't know where they got it from. But I don't know in a helicopter and all kinds of other stuff, and we don't have orgies. And I mean, I'm telling you, I've been accused of all kinds of stuff. Yachts. All kinds of things. And it's amazing how the people accept the voice of the stranger and actually believe it. I've been accused of putting microphones in people's homes. <laughs> Maybe cameras, I don't know. Talk about presumptuous sin. Like, what the heck? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just blows me away. But people will fight for what they believe even though it's not even the truth. Amen. Why? Because their atmosphere is darkness. And that's how the enemy operates. Glory to God. <laughs> it is not the character of Christ. It's sin. It's the sin of presence of evil. It's darkness. Everyone, again, must work out their own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. We need deliverance from mental images. There's a prayer in a booklet that says deliverance from mental images. It's powerful. Read it. Speak it. Decree it. Hebrews 12. <laughs> I'm sure I can find some use for it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, we've been accused of stealing and all kinds of stuff. But praise God. <laughs> Verse 25. Hebrews 12, verse 25. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Everyone is being shaken. Turn to your neighbor and said, you're being shaken. It has nothing to do with whether you like it or not. <laughs> it has nothing to do with whether you prayed for it or not. <laughs> Everyone is being shaken to remove and dismantle ungodly character of darkness. Why? So we're able to serve God with true honor, respect, and reverence, which is the fear of the Lord. 1 John chapter 3. In verse 10. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. Hallelujah. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteousness. Don't marvel my brethren, if the world, what, hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. We, he who does not love his brother abides in death. 
Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hallelujah. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. We also ought to lay down our lives for each other. That's powerful. This is an area where people fall into their place of self-righteousness versus righteousness. Amen. There are many acts. You know, many act like children of God. And then an hour later, they act like the children of the devil. Because there's an atmosphere change. How many of you know you change your atmosphere by what you speak? Amen. Boom! Change instantly. You can avoid every demon from hell. Or are the angels from heaven? What comes out of your mouth? In Psalm 64. Again, that's why you see all over the world such lying, wickedness, perverse mouth. We cannot get caught up with it, nor be a part of it, but depart from it. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless, and suddenly they shoot at him, and do not fear. It is called a serpent tongue of bitter words. Psalm 50. Serpent tongue. I think you heard the story already. One night I was playing tennis with a friend of mine. It was about 10 o'clock at night. It was getting darker. Lights came on in the court, and, and we were slaying the balls, having a good time. And there was this group of kids down at the other end, and this kid, I mean, just started going off so perversely. I wanted to say something so bad. Then I finally got wisdom from above. And I yelled over to him and said, I hope you don't kiss anybody with that mouth. His friends died. They were all laughing like crazy. But get him out him. I thought, this is cool. I like that, Lord. <laughs> but it brought a reality to him. His friends were all dying. Then they started saying to him, yeah, we don't kiss anyone with your mouth. You know? <laughs> what a perverse mouth. Because it was filthy and dirty. It was contaminated. Psalm 16. I mean, verse 16. Psalm 50, 16. Is everybody there? So when somebody starts letting off whatever, just tell them, man, I hope you don't kiss anyone with that mouth. You'll contaminate them. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? When you saw a thief, you consented with him <clears throat> and have been a partaker <coughs> with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother and slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. That's why the shaking is here. Amen. God is going to get things in order. A perverse mouth and accusing words of darkness that have engulfed mankind these days. In Psalm 52. In verse 1. Psalm 52, verse 1. Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue deceives destruction, devises destruction. 
like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. I know what, you know, the word warns us about a tongue. Amen? It's unruly. <laughs> so we see here that a tongue devises destruction, de devouring words against all, all mankind. The enemy uses it. Why? Because it's engulfed by darkness. Psalm 140. A person, you know, you always wonder. Uh, yeah, one, we have a teaching called uh, the ruling voice of your house, something like that. What's ruling, what voice are you allowing to rule your temple? Ruling voice, yeah. Verse 1, one, Psalm 140. <clears throat> and then one more scripture. Is everybody okay? Amen. First, you've got to escape yourself. Yeah. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for, they sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of ass is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. Again, truth and light will bring many out of darkness. But you've got to first expose it. If you don't know it's there, we got to first expose it in ourselves. That's where self-examination is vital. Ephesians 4. You know, when we were kids, when a friend of yours got angry with you, you got angry with them, you tried everything you could to hurt them by your words. Especially when they turn around and said, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me, so I throw the stick. <laughs> that was a vicious kid. <laughs> yeah, my words won't hurt, but this rock will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God Jesus came and rescued me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why people turn to violence by their own words. Yeah. Then they turn to violence. Yeah. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their imagination or their minds, their thoughts. Having their understanding what? Darkened because they're walking in an atmosphere of darkness. Being alienated from the life of God. Now listen, the being alienated from the life of God is meaning represent being alienated from the character of Christ. Because there are many believers who are in this condition. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, or the hardness of their heart. Who being past feeling, people who make emotional decisions are dangerous have given themselves over to lewdness to work all cleanliness with greed, uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned what? Christ. You have not so learned the ways of Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put it off, man. Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, emotions, imaginations, that you put on the what? New man, which was created according to God and true. He says, I want you to understand, he says, true righteousness Amen. and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Anybody ever been angry? Okay. You didn't agree, you lied. So you can repent for that. Everybody's been angry, but what do you do with it? That's where you know where you are then. If you examine yourself to know where you are, whether you're reacting or responding in anger. See, sometimes we got to depart from that atmosphere. That's why you run to the throne. Amen? Therefore, putting away this lying, be angry and don't sin. In other words, be angry and don't sin. Sin is the presence of evil. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Because it ain't God's wrath. <laughs> Nor give place to the, the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hand what is good, that he may have something to give him who is need. Now, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not get, grieve. Why? Because all of these things will grieve the Holy Spirit. Even if you think you're right. Even if you are right. It will still grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen? Does everybody understand it? Even if you are right, it's going to grieve the Holy Spirit. Was Jesus right? He told Pilate, look at man. He, of course, Pilate tried to tell him, look at, I got power to save your life. He says, man, ain't no power. You ain't got nothing except for what's been given to you. Now, he could have called him a moron and an idiot, but he didn't. Why? Because he trusted. He wanted to fulfill the mission. See, when your relationship with the Lord is so strong that you'll, it doesn't matter what happens, you will fulfill the mission no matter what. Amen. That's where God's love is so important. Amen. See, many people are walking in their own love and not God's love. There's a self-love, a selfish love, and a godly love. Amen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be what? Kind to one another. Tender heart of forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. I'm going to go to the next verse. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Be imitators of God as dear children. Escape the darkness. We need to constantly maintain our atmosphere of light, not darkness. Amen? Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Expose darkness in your life. The world is snagged in darkness right now. You see it all over. All over. We need to be interceding for individuals that have been taken captive. Amen? Because they're not going to come out without your prayers of intercession. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for a way of escape from darkness. We thank you for rescuing those who've been taken captive in darkness. That you may grant them the wisdom and understanding to see things all the way through. Lord, you are awesome and mighty and there is none like you. We repent, Lord, even right now for any area where we have grieved the Holy Spirit. We repent for all of our words, assumptions, accusations, grumbling, complaining, and criticizing. Lord, we take this opportunity we repent. 
Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us completely. Everyone that we've hurt by our own words, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Everyone that has hurt us, we forgive them. And we ask, Lord, for healing to take place to all those who've been hurt by words, by offenses, by abuses. That they may walk in your truth and light and that their atmosphere would be changed from darkness to light and not allow any darkness in. That their imaginations would be cleansed and brought to light and that we no longer fight for what we believe, but we fight for what is truth. And let your truth and light guide us to your tabernacle and your presence and glory in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen.